What's up, guys? Welcome to episode number 16 of Sir Kevin Says. Today, we feature drummer and percussionist Alex Acuna. This one is really cool for me because Alex happens to be from Peru, which is where my family is from. Uh, one thing in this podcast we really did not discuss was how good and delicious uh, Peruvian food is. I think it's the best in the world, but you know, other people want to go ahead and argue with me about it. But and anyway, I'm just kidding. Uh, a little bit about Alex. He was born in Pativilca, Peru, 100 miles north of Lima. He was born into a musical family that inspired him and helped shape him as a musician. His father and brothers were all musicians as well. Alex taught himself how to play the drums at the age of four, and by the time Alex turned 10, he was already playing in local bands. As a teenager, he moved to Lima and became one of Peru's most accomplished session drummers, performing on many recording projects for artists as well as film and television productions. In Lima, Alex also earned a glowing reputation for his live performances. So much so that at the age of 18, Alex was chosen in 1964 by the great Cuban band leader, Perez Prado, to join his big band. It was with the Prado band that Alex first traveled to the United States. In 1965, Alex moved to Puerto Rico to work as a studio musician and play locally. During this period, he also studied for three years at the Puerto Rico Conservatory of Music, playing as a classical percussionist with the symphony orchestra under the direction of the famed Spanish cellist, Master Pablo Casals. Alex moved to Las Vegas in 1974, where he played with such greats as Elvis Presley, Diana Ross, Paul Anka, Frank Sinatra, Olivia Newton-John, and between 1975 and 1977, he made part of jazz history when he became both the drummer and percussionist for one of the most innovative pioneering jazz groups of our time, Weather Report. Since 2000, Alex has participated in these following movies. Drumline, The Incredibles, Hancock, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Mission Impossible 3 and 4, Star Trek, and also Star Trek Into the Darkness, Ratatouille, Up, Super 8, Italian Job, Beverly Hills, Chihuahua, Happy Feet, Transformers, Speed Racer, Red, The Kite Runner, X-Men Origin, Wolverine, Entangled, Born Legacy, Bucket List, Toy Story 3, Cars 2, Monte Carlo, Happy Feet, the list goes on and on and on, and that is not even including the movies he's been in this year, in 2019. You guys will see if you watch the podcast uh, what movies he's participated in. Alex was generous enough to demonstrate the Peruvian rhythm festejo on cajon. So I tell you, there are a, a few festejos beats, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just one. You know? uh, they all have different names. I don't know the names, really, but uh, this is... Okay. Right? This one. Yep. And then it's another one. Beat. I want the other beat, you know, 
tiene de pan. See, right there is the melody. Is your yeah, yeah. Then this is one that is is very for like a almost for like a descarga very fast. Hey. The, the Peruvian claves. <laughs> Team boom. <laughs> this one is really, really cool uh, because Alex shares a lot about his life, uh, what he's accomplished. But then one of the things that struck me the most is what Alex tells me during the podcast. He says to me, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter what I did before. Whatever career I had, whichever musicians or artists I played with, that's not of concern anymore. It's what I'm doing now. And I think that that's such a relevant comment to make in today's society because it's about what we're doing now in the present and so on and so forth. So I think you guys are going to enjoy episode number 16 with Alex Acuna. I can't wait for you guys to watch it. Let me know what you guys think. Here you go. Episode number 16, Sir Kevin Says. Welcome to episode number 16 of Sir Kevin Says. Today, I am with Alex Acuna, drummer extraordinaire and percussionist. Alex, thank you so much for your time. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent. Yes? Really good. Thank you so much for opening up your home to do this uh, podcast. Yeah, definitely, man. You know, welcome. I mean, you know, I like to share stuff. You know. Yes, incredible, so. incredible. Well, we have a lot to hear from you today. I'm very excited. Wonderful. Uh, yeah. So let's start with where are you originally from? I'm from South America, okay. uh, from Lima, Peru, the state of Lima, which is in Espanol, Departamento de Lima. Ah, okay. North, uh, a small little town called Pativilca. Okay. And um, I was born there, lived there for about 15 years, and then I came to Lima when I was uh, 16. Then I lived in Lima for two and a half years and came to United States when I was 18 and a half. And uh, my parents had 11 children and the number 10, six boys, five girls. Uh, we lived for long, a for long time, um, nine, six boys and three girls. And uh, anyhow, that's a beautiful wow. life that I had and uh, started playing music when I was very young. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the only thing that we had. Yeah. You know, it was a beautiful gift. And uh, so anyhow, that's that's my life. I still is. Yeah. When did you pick up drums and percussion? When I was three years old. Wow. Yes. Do you remember at that age you started playing like, a, you know, cajon or, you know, any instruments or what did you start with? Okay, great. Um, my father was a music teacher. Okay. He used to teach uh, high school. And my five older brothers became excellent musicians, uh -huh. uh, top musicians in Peru. And that's the only thing we had. Uh, we didn't know how, what to do, any other thing to do. And uh, But when my mother noticed that I had a, a gift on playing, 
a very, very early age, uh, sh she told my father not to teach me music because she wanted me to be a, maybe a carpenter or a mechanic uh -huh. or something to have a different profession. Mainly because every time my brothers and my father and my uncles and my, my cousins had a band, went out to do a gig, they left by 6 p.m. and they came back by 6 a.m. Wow. And I was the youngest one. My mother said, I don't think I want that life for Alex. Yeah. My name is Alejandro, by the way. Mm. And um, But by seven years old, when I was seven years old, I knew what I wanted to be. And it's exactly what I'm doing. It's exactly what I'm, I've done all my life, playing naturally. Uh, I still study, practice. I'm an eternal study, a student, excuse me, of uh, music mm. uh, that will never stop. And uh, then when I was 16, I went to Lima and became a studio musician in Lima for two and a half years. Mm. They saw me play in Lima uh, Damaso Perez Prado, mm, the, the, the person that invented the mambo yes. from Cuba. He was looking for a drummer to do a tour in South America with his band. And he wanted a good drummer for his kind of music. And in Peru in those days, and still now, there were a, a lots of great Cuban musicians. And I think out of the South American country, Peru was one of the best Cuban interpreters of mm -hmm. music because of the musician, um, you know, migration that was yeah. there. And so they recommend me to Damaso Perez Prado. And uh, when he saw me play immediately, he says, I want to bring you to the United States. And I said, Thank you. <laughs> so I came here with a permanent residency. I never went through any illegal or, or any uh, working visa or anything like that. I came here from Peru and the American consulate was signed. My parents signed the contract and, and I got the visa and everything with a permanent residence. What is called in those days was called the green card. Mm. Exactly. So that's more or less my life from that time to when I came at 18 years old to this country. Beautiful, wonderful country. Awesome, awesome. While we were setting up the equipment, I remember, you know, um, well, actually, we were talking a lot about your faith. That's a big part of who you are. <laughs> yes. When did you come to know the Lord? How did that, how did that happen? <laughs> exactly, at that age, at seven years old, I established a relationship with God. Not a religion, mm. a rela yeah. relationship. How? Okay. I told you that I play soccer since I was five years old. Yeah, yeah. So by seven, I already was in the team playing soccer. But I already was playing drums and percussion. In parentheses, by the way, my father also made the instruments. So when you ask me what instrument I start playing with, Everything, exactly what I'm doing right now. Cajon didn't exist in Peru in those days. Mm. I tell you a story about Cajon later. Uh, congas, timbales, bongos, drums, you know. My father found a carpenter, a, a great luthier, and uh, a guy that worked, another one that, that worked on the, on the, on the, how do you call it, the metal, metal soul so he can make the rims. But my father killed the ship to make the drum heads. Oh, wow. And he taught me how to do that. I'm probably one of the very few, if there are other drummers in the world, that can put a, a head in the rim, a, a natural, regular head, drum head. Yeah. I know how to do that. Wow. I know how to prepare. I know how to do that. So, anyhow. That's uh, what happened. So my faith, after I was playing a, an incredible soccer game with, uh, you know, 22 players, 11 on each side, they all were friends. Maybe some of them were eight, nine, ten years older, uh, three, two years older than me. Uh, we had a great uh, 
friendship, you know, and uh, I had a, a big house, like my house here, yeah. you know, yeah. with a big backyard and everything. Because we were 11 kids. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, so I said, let's go to my house. I have some congas, timbales, cowbell, platillos, cymbals, everything, you know, <laughs> that, that, to play. And, 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 and they all, like, a, a, like in a choir, I said, oh, 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 no, 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 no. We don't know how to play anything. And I, the reason I thought they knew how to play because my brothers also play music and play soccer. Mm. So I play music and play soccer and I thought that everybody's a soccer player and I, I'm a musician. <laughs> yeah. play, they can play music. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when I just look up to the sky and I said, do you give me something different to all my friends? <laughs> and that's when God came to me. So I had visions. I had uh, dreams. I had desires. Wow. I had um, especially communication with him. And now, of course, you know, you know, you read the Bible and you find all those things that naturally came to you. Right. In Matthew 7, 7 says, knock on my door, mm -hmm. I will open. Ask me and I will answer. Uh, whatever you ask, I will give it to you. Yeah. And uh, seek and you shall me find. and you shall find me. Yeah. You know, well, I did that since I was seven years old. You know, my sisters, one, Older, two years older than me, and the other one younger, two years younger than me. They remember that. That we used to go to a little uh, mountain mountain there by the, the sugar cane love place there. And we sit in that eating sugar cane, you know. And, um, and every time I saw a little plane going by, I used to tell them, I said, you know, one day, I'm going to travel the whole world playing music. And they thought I was crazy. I said, come on. Mm. Are you crazy? You know, because they didn't, not that they didn't believe, they just didn't understood my vision, yeah. my desires, my dreams, you know. And they didn't know that I used to talk to God every day of my life. I still do. Yeah. So I've been uh, having that relationship since I was seven years old. You know, Putting uh, two plus two together, you know, uh, your life start developing, especially if anybody mm -hmm. in this case was very blessed to understood him. Yeah. And if you ask me how, I understood him because I used to see my mother praying for us. My mother kneel every day behind the kitchen door to ask God to send food because we were 11 children. And then wow. later we were nine kids. And even if you have a lot of money, mm. I don't think you can have money to feed nine kids yeah. every day. My mother was in the kitchen from six o'clock in the morning to 6 p.m. PM in the evening. And, uh, and she was like, she did things like that, like our Lord Jesus did with four or five different, you know, the Peruvian potatoes are bigger than these microphones. <laughs> and she mixed it with the tomatoes, with these onions and this and that and that little chicken here. She raised chicken, blah, blah, blah. And she made food for nine kids, you know, like that. And so when I saw her faith, and because I was the youngest one uh, of the boys, yeah. I was very attracted to her, to my mom in the ways spiritually, mentally, physically, yeah. her love, her patience, her all, she had uh, beautiful virtues. And that's, I said, I'm going to take that and apply it into my life. So prayer, talking, confessing, obedient, uh, forgiving, uh, sharing, and, and, and especially uh, uh, no self-condemnation Mm. It's been in my life since I was a little kid. Yeah. You know. That's incredible. Yeah. You've worked on some of the biggest movies. Um, you know, you get these opportunities to play with all these different artists in, in the past. And how has that kept you? Do, do you make decisions based upon your faith? Do you pray about it? Do you take time to really analyze what you should be saying yes to and what you should be saying no to? That's a great question. Because... Um, 
See, when you pray, especially after you grow a little bit more in your life uh, as a human, as a professional, uh, I always tell my friends, and uh, as a conversation, I talk a lot with my wife. We communicate a lot. And uh, I came not to a logo or to something that, that, that to describe a, what a personal life of a person, in this case, my personality is. I tell them that I have uh, many, many degrees. Mm. You know, first of all, First of all, I was a, a son to my parents. I was a brother to my brothers and my sisters. Uh, then I became a husband. That's a three, third title. Then I became a father. That's a fourth title. Then... I became a grandfather, but before I became a grandfather, I became a Christian, uh, touched by the Holy Spirit of God. And then I became a, a really a professional musician. I'm not trying to put that in the bottom, mm. but the other things were my priority. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I have about seven, eight different titles, <laughs> you know, and now I'm a, a, a missionary. I'm an evangelist. And I'm a, I like to share the word of God, Yeah, you know, uh, normal, sometimes with words, you know. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's what I am. I'm going to keep that happening in my life because it worked for me really good. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but I also like uh, uh, sports. And right now, um, I'm 74 years old. In December, I'd be 75. I, I do train a lot of martial arts. Mm -hmm. I teach also martial arts to younger people. Like I teach music just because I know it's healthy. So I like to share. Yeah. Uh, and during those, those times of sharing uh, music, life, not philosophy, but belief, uh, you know, something that is pure and, and that is real in your yeah. life. I think it's nice to share, especially to the young generations, <laughs> that the things are going to work better in your life if you put God first. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the Bible says, says uh, Matthew 6, 36, seek first the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and everything else will be added into, into your life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and uh, when God give you in these times, in these days, while you're growing up as a person with all these titles that he gave me <laughs> that I mentioned, <laughs> you know, being a father, being a grandfather, being a husband, being a brother, being a friend, being a musician and all of that, uh, it's wonderful to be, to be able to receive and accept the versions, I mean, the scriptures that he sent to you. I know that God sends a scripture to everybody because he wants you to live by those scriptures. Yeah. So you will never forget those scriptures because he sent them to you very, for very special reasons yeah. for your life yeah. to increase your, not only to increase uh, your belief or anything like that, no, the belief, that's a, something personal, but he's there to help you how to grow, how to really become the person that he created at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, what you know, we can ask ourselves, what's the reason why we exist? Exist, yeah. you know, why? Uh, oh, he gave me music, great, you know. So there is a time that we put everything together. Say, well, he gave me music because for these times it's like a, an immense, incredible, immense, and incredible uh, platform that he's poor in lives of people that want to share him, yeah. his goodness, his blessings yeah. in general to everybody. And, uh, and that's exactly when I mentioned before um, that I'm a, a missionary in my country, you know, what a privilege. 
I actually work with uh, American uh, missionaries in Peru. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that becomes real because you get to see his strength. You get to, you get to feel his presence. Uh, you grow with, with the assurance that he's always next to you. Yeah, that's good. No matter when. That's good. Let's backtrack a little bit because you've played, we've played, you've played uh, with some of the best musicians in the world, I would consider. Let's go back to your first, uh, if you can remember, your first time getting that big gig. The, the <laughs> moment you were like, you know what, this is an opportunity. Maybe it was with uh, Perez Prado, you were talking about coming to the United States. Let's go back to that time. What was that like? Who was it with? What was the experience like for you? Thank you. You know, what happened is so many of those great experiences, they gradually come and come and come and come and they keep growing and going and going and going and going and don't stop until the end, really. That's, mm. I hope it's the case for everybody, Yeah. you know. But personally, uh, that's what I always say. I'm very blessed, you know. Okay, when my brothers, by the way, when I was 12 years old, in those times, my brothers older than me, in those years, people got married very young. By 17, 18, 19 years old, they already had a family. Oh, So wow. my brothers, they all have <laughs> kids and wives. and So they migrated to Lima because they were great musicians and they became the best musicians in Lima. They record, they do television, they, you know, they work every day. And... So I stayed with my mom, my two sisters, the one that I mentioned before, two years older and two years younger than me, and a nephew that was born out of wedlock, and he came to live with us. He was six months old. Mm -hmm. Now he's a pastor, by the way. Wow. And But anyhow, so by 12 years old, I was in charge of my mother, my two sisters, and my nephew, you know, paying the rent, paying the telephone, paying the WD, whatever the water, <laughs> WDPD, WDP, I don't know yeah. how you call that. And, and uh, you know, and everything, you know, by 12 years old. So I have that. And it wasn't a burden to me mm -hmm. uh, because I already was working. I started working when I was 10 years old, yeah. professionally making money with music. By 10, I was already there playing every weekend, making money to be able to to be the head of the family. By 12 years, I, I had experience already in how to raise a family. So I came to Lima, and to ask, to answer your question, when they're always been very humble about things because the humbleness is a virtue that is created by a belief that you have, by an assurance that is gonna come to you. Mm. So that make you humble, that give you peace, they make you wait. You, it's exactly what it says over there. Write your visions in Habakkuk 2, 2, 3. Mm. In those days, write your visions. And, 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 but I didn't write my visions. I just asked for my visions. And I knew they were coming because yeah. God starts showing you. Or, you, or how they materialize, how they really come alive, yeah. everything that you ask for. So when I went to Lima, uh, maybe the first six months I was doing little gigs, and then they noticed that I was able to read. Now, if you ask me how I learned how to read music, I told you that my mother didn't want me to be a musician, yeah. but when my father was teaching my brothers, I was right there sitting, watching, and listening to the teachings. And that's how I learned how to read trumpet. And then one of my brothers showed me how to play the trumpet. The other one, the other ones showed me how to play the, the piano. So, and, and, and rhythm and drumming was natu nature, natural for me. Yeah. It, nobody showed me that. And um, so I was able to play. And by the way, going back a little bit, this is the first gig that was amazing for me. Like I told you in the conversation that my brother got married very young. Mm -hmm. The drummer of the band, which one of, one of my brothers, played trumpet and drums. 
by she was 17, his wife, his girlfriend was 16. They escaped. They left it Thursday. So they had no drummer for the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of that weekend. They said, who's going to play the drums? And I'm there. I'm 10 years old. I said, <laughs> and they all said, we never saw you play. But, well, I, you never saw me play because I respect my mom. But she didn't want me to be a musician. So when you guys were rehearsing, I was there. I know all the songs. When you guys were taking the lessons, I know how, how to read. When uh, my mom wasn't home, I practice, I play. You guys, the instruments were in the house. Like My house was like a conservatory. Everybody in the different room studying constantly because my father was a disciplinarian teacher. He wanted the lessons to be done by Friday or by Thursday. Yeah. He taught my brothers on Monday by Thursday. He said, you have four days to have this lesson ready for me. So my father was there. And I was there watching, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, watching my brother, how they they progress musically. Yeah. So this is the first time that I audition. I never audition again. My family auditioned asked me to audition to see if I could play. Wow. That's the first and only time that I have audition in my life. I've auditioned for my family. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> and then, uh, they said, whoa, wait a second, you... Because I, on top of that, when I became seven years old again, I mean, I'm saying again, seven years old, I listened to the radio. We didn't have the radio, but a, a neighbor had a radio that he played two hours of music from noon to 12, starting with classical, Cuban music, ethnic music from Peru, rock and roll, jazz to Kellington, and, uh, and everything. So, and I, that's when I discovered that music was just one thing, not the styles of genres, mm. different genres. Music was music for me. And I love each one of them that I just mentioned, jazz, classical, ethnic, Peruvian, South American, you know, whatever, Cuban. And uh, so I knew all the arrangements of Perez Prado, probably better than Perez Prado. And... Uh, so when they auditioned me, I got the gig. Wow. And, it, and my mother came and, and she said, okay, I'm going to let him go. But you have to pay him the same money that you guys are making. So she became my manager. <laughs> 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 that was my, my first gig. Wow. That it was very impressive for me to play with my father, my brothers, my cousins, and my uncles. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about Peruvian music. Sure. Afro-Peruvian music. Uh, some of the rhythms. There's a uh, balz, there's a uh, festejo, you know, right. all these different rhythms. Yeah. Do you think that that also happens in Peru when, when, when somebody picks up uh, uh, an instrument, a cajon, for example, and they start playing these rhythms? Is it something natural that happens or is it something that you have to still take time to learn? Yeah, in, in, in what you were saying, uh, the only discrepancy, you kind of answer the question, but in, uh, in, there is a discrepancy because the Afro-Peruvian music, it used to be segregated. Remember, I was playing music in Peru in the 60s. Mm -hmm. So that is 50 years ago, 50 more years, some years ago. Yeah. Right. So, I'm going to begin with this. It might sound a, a little negative, but it's not. It's very positive. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't talk negative stuff. Uh, when I went to Lima, before I went to Lima, my father was teaching my brothers because my father played every instrument very well. Mm -hmm. From bongo to timpani and from uh, the, the guitar all the way. Everything, all the instruments, he know he knew how to play trumpet, trombone, saxophone, flute, clarinet, everything, amazing. Drums. So one day, he used to be a Marine, 
And one day he came and was teaching my brothers, Marinera. First of all, I will say that my father was from a region born in the north of Peru, in Chiclayo, Puerto de Eten, the Eten port, where we play Marinera Norteña, mm. with, which is called Tondero. It's in 12 8. You know, that, that. And so my father called my brothers, you come over here, Pedro, you play the bass drum. The, the bass drum is going to be in six, four. One, two, three, four, that's in four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, one, two, right? Now, Moises, Moses, come over here. You're going to play the snare. The snare has a roll, six-stroke roll, and a nine-stroke roll. That's a nine-stroke roll. The other one is six. So now, right? <laughs> now, you, German, German, come over here. You're going to play the piares, the symbols, like the hi hat in Peru, it's called the chalice. With the hands, it's in four four. One, two, three, four. Done. Two, three, four. So it's it's twelve, six, four, three. All those bits are included in the marinera. Mm. And so there were Cajon players from the north that were playing the Marinera and the Tondero. And uh, my father took it from there and put it into the bass drum, the, the cymbal and the snare. But it needed two, three players to play. Now I can play that along those three parts yeah. on the drums. Mm -hmm. Probably, I don't want to say it like this because it sounds really like a... I'm the baddest guy. <laughs> you have to really study because it's playing uh, superimposed rhythms and it's playing technique and it's playing the flavor. But I don't think many Peruvians or any Peruvians really play this rhythm the way I play. So I grew up playing that. Yeah. So yeah. I have a reason to say yes. Of course. Of it, course. it belonged to me. Yeah. And on the other hand, my mother is from the Andes. So my mother used to dance the music from the Andes, the guainos and all that. So I also elaborate that on the drums. Uh, I understand that music really well. This is the music that God gave to my parents and, and my parents gave it to me yeah. since I was a, a very small child. Right. So it's, in, it's implanted in my life. But um, the cajón, so when I went to Lima to answer you about the cajón, I went to ask Don Ronaldo Campos, who is the creator, well, the second creator of a uh, Peru Negro, the dance yeah. Afro-Peruvian. Yes. Uh, I was 16 years old. Uh, I was introduced by some drummers. Like I said before, that music was segregated, only belonged to the blacks, people in, Peru, in Lima. So when I went there, because the descendants, the descendants are from the South with this uh, Pisco, Nazca, mm. you know, around there. So I said, Don Ronaldo, can you teach me how to play this rhythm with the cajon? And, and the first thing he told me, he said, Alex, your hair is different. You don't have the hair. Wow. Yes. But I didn't get offended. Uh, you know what I told him? I'm as dark as you are. <laughs> he 
he looked at me, really, prove it to me. Sure. I sit on the cajon and I start playing an incredible wow and go <laughs> with coordination. He said, whoa. I said, so, yes, I'm dark. I don't have the hair. Yes, and he says, I really don't have a time to explain why I don't want a tissue. Then later, about 35 years later, I met him. And I used him in my videos in Peru because I did concerts in Peru with Los Hijos del Sol. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'm going to give you a record to you. Thank you. I, I'll, I'll definitely take that. I have I have um, Alex Acuna and the Unknowns album. That, yeah, 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 that's a that's that, that's a different music. Yeah, yeah. This is Peruvian music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. amazing. And uh, I tell you, that's a different story. Anyhow, I used him. I said I was that one. He said, "Don't Ronaldo come, Alex. I'm sorry. Now I'm going to explain why I didn't talk to you, because in still now to become." A, a, a player on the Afro-Peruvian music, you have to play congas, bongos, you have to sing, you have to play guitar, you have to learn how to zapatear, you know, mm -hmm. how to uh, the, the, do the tap dancing. Yeah, yeah. And you, then the cajón and the, the, the quijada. And, and, and I said, you cannot just learn one. It's a seven different, eight different instruments, yeah. different things that you have to learn. It's not just one. It's not a, a quick... Shortcut. Right. Ah, oh, no wonder. Yes. And uh, that's, he, 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 it makes sense. Yeah. Some people, especially now, lots of people want to shortcut. Bah, 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 play one, one genre and they think they're the baddest guy in, right. in the earth. No, right. no, no. You know. So, okay. I learned how to play the cajon on my own, like everything. I'm still learning. And uh, I got this opportunity to build a cajon. I built a cajon for Toca in those days, but because they didn't know how, how to build a cajon. But look at this. God comes. He sent me to Peru for uh, Billy Graham uh, ministry in Peru, in South America. They were doing a taping of people, Christians, that they have a name in the country. So I was elected and I went there and I got introduced to the guy that makes the cajons in Peru. Right now his name is Alexis Castaneda, Castaneda. And Alexis knew that I was there. He came with all different cajons that he was making for Peru Negro and he showed me one. I said, whoa, can I use it? Yeah, so I did the video playing the cajon and giving my testimony. And they show those testimony on a Sunday mm. in all over the churches in Peru, the Christian churches. And thousands and thousands of people came to the Lord wow. in that Sunday. And uh, so I said, let's make this cajon in the United States. The Lord gave me a vision that you are going to be the one. And uh, this cajon had to come out of Peru and to go to all over the world. To make the long story short, I got signed with Gombaps. Mm. And uh, in those days, Gombap was owned by DW Drums mm -hmm. for five years. And uh, they gave me a line of instruments, congas, timbales, cowbells, bongos, everything. I said, I want my cajon, the one that you're sitting on right now, to be made in Peru because they use... They know they've been making cajon for many years. Right. That instrument is belongs to Peru. It doesn't yeah. belong to any other. A lot of people think it's a it's a Spanish instrument, right? They don't. They don't know. They yeah. don't. They don't know. That, that's what well, they can say. Whatever they can, <laughs> they can say. That's I know the history of the cajon oh, right. better than anybody. Yeah. And um, well, part of the history of Peru. Anyhow, but um, we start making the cajon, and now that boy. I mean, he was a boy. He and his father were making, they they were they used to make drawers like this. 
And um, I said, Alex, we're going to make it, you know, the sizes you want, the sound that you want. And, okay, great. You know, we definitely made many, many to get to the, to the one that we want, that I like. And uh, the company was convinced. Okay. They went with me to South America, met him. Alexis had a, a room as big as this, making the cajon with, with his father and another worker. Now he has a factory as big as my house, with 35 employees wow. making cajons. And that cajon is going around the world. And uh, it became one of the most, not influential, but one of the percussion instruments, most used percussion instrument of this time. Yeah. You know, very popular. And, uh, but what is really not, not departure from the musical uh, question that you had. Um, what it really means to me is that 35 families of Peru are having food every day in their tables. Mm. That's what it means to me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The cajon brought that. That's what God sent me with the uh, ministry to Peru to meet him, you know. And uh, I can say the same thing. God sent Perez Prado to get me here to to also meet, I mean, to be safe. Yeah. Jesus, you know. Uh, uh, there's always a purpose. Yeah. But uh, the, the situation with the cajon. So now uh, I can tell somebody that plays the cajon the Peruvian way or it doesn't because you know I'm Peruvian and I play with with the with the dark people <laughs> <laughs> and I play with them and uh, I learned from them and uh, but the cajon talking about the Spanish cajon that you mentioned the story is that Paco went there, Chabuca Granda gave him a couple of cajons. He included that instrument in his music, the flamenco. And, uh, and the Spanish flamenco cajon is not an easy one to play. It's also in 12-8, mm -hmm. but it's a different feel. Yeah. And, uh, and Paco put it with Ruben Dantas and uh, it became the most popular cajon in Europe. What happened that the people think that that cajon, the cajon belongs to Spain is because the South Americans, the Peruvians, maybe now they have money, they have facility to be able to display, make shows, to put it on, on YouTube and that the, the Peruvian cajon. But in, in the days when Paco was in Europe, Paco toured all over Europe, France, Germany, and they have all those facilities yeah. to tape the concerts and this, and the, it's a flamenco at home. Oh, it's, it's, you know, with the dancers and this, you know, all that. And they thought that it was a flamenco, it was a Spanish uh, instrument, you know, because they, that's the thing everybody saw it, you know, in England and all over Europe, mm. you know, because um, it was an incredible, now I won't, I won't like to say marketing, but it was like uh, displayed that way. Yeah. But that's not the history, you yeah. know. That's part of the history. Right. But it's not. Anyhow. I, by the way, I play with Paco. Oh, okay. I play, I uh, had the, the the honor and privilege to play with Chico Correa and Paco in an album that we did here in Los Angeles, 1982. And uh, that was the first time a Peruvian cajon was recorded in a major label with a major artist. The first time, wow. uh, 1982. The name of the CD is called um, Touchstone. And uh, right now, I think Chick is doing a tour and recording with that kind of a music right now, as we speak right now. And But I did that album in 1982. It's, it's, it's about 36 years ago, yeah. or 37 years ago. And... Um, that it was the first time a Peruvian cajon was recorded in history. Wow. You know, and God gave me the privilege to bring this cajon to the United States through this company, to Gombabs. And now you go to Scandinavia, to the North Pole, and there is a cajon over there. You go to the South, you go to Chile, Argentina, to the glaciers, and you find a cajon over there. <laughs> you go to the West and you go to the East. And there is a cajon. Yeah. So cajon is everywhere. 
If you play country music on the cajón, it's fantastic. You play rock and roll cajón, you play Latin cajón, you can play Peruvian cajón. Right. And going back to the festejo and Lando, I talked this. Uh, the rhythms definitely come from the melodies of the songs. Okay. So there was a migration of African descendants, Peruvians in, in Chincha, especially south of Lima, right? Department of, of ICA, I-C-A. Mm -hmm. And that's when all these people that play Lando and Festejos and play the Cajon and, and, and tap dance in 12-8, they came from there and the station in Lima. And anyhow, but before they played the Cajon, the Cajon became their instrument. They used to sing this song that when I went to Lima, because I used to go to their neighborhood, because I still wanted to feel it and learn. A la molina no voy más, da 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 sin cesar. I don't know the lyrics. A la molina, but that's the melody. Now, this is a Lando, or el slow festejo, ting, ta ta, tum, ting, tum, ta, tum, ting, ta ta, tum, ta, ting, ta, ta, tum, ting. A la molina no voy más, ta ta, tum, ting, ta, sin cesar. A la molina. You see what I mean? So you play that faster, it's a festejo. That's a festejo. Yeah. For our viewers, just quickly, how would you count that? How would you count that? Is it in six? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I twelve, eleven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, twelve, eight. Twelve, eight. Okay. All those rhythms are included in yeah. there. Yeah. You can play it. So divided in three, so divided in four, so divided in six, and it's a 12 8. Yeah. That's good. It's a very rich and long uh, bar. Mm -hmm. One bar is very long. <laughs> it's a long bar. Yeah. So you can put a lot of all these uh, time signatures in it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I've been teaching, you know, and I've been writing uh, my experiences, my learning, my discernment in how to break down, you know, musically, rhythmically, and, and uh, uh, also using... Uh, different techniques, uh, rudiments, and all of that into the cajon. Mm -hmm. So just to keep increasing and sustaining and maintaining my my musicianship as of well, course. you know, of personally, course. you know. Yeah. yeah. What would you say is your greatest accomplishment to date? Oh. <laughs> I know there's many. I know there's many. And this is the question well, that everybody's… Well, no, there are categories, you know. Yeah. In life, yeah. uh, uh, joy… Uh, love, mm -hmm. uh, spiritually, physically, soulfully, mentally, yeah. uh, with wisdom, understanding, discernment, victory, mm. uh, strength. It, there's so many, you yeah. know, there's categories of, of, you know, musically, definitely, uh, right now, just to tap it off, you know, uh, I work maybe five, six months very constantly, like uh, the end of January all the way to June, on playing on the movie soundtracks with the orchestras, with different composers. Yeah. And mainly because all the, all, everything is thanks to God. The percussion has become an incredible asset to the music right. for right. anything, but especially for music, mm. for movies, the taikos, the jembes, everything. Yeah. And so God gave me the wisdom to be able to read music and to educate myself. And, uh, and I still educating. So, and the experience and the platform to be with other great musicians to learn from them. 
So, and but also the, the, the humbleness and humility and, and, and the love, especially to be able to tell um, my friends, musicians, the composers, the, the, the people that hire the music, the contractors, you know. I called the contractors a long time ago, more than 20 years ago. I said, I'm not traveling. I'm in town. Uh, I'm available. But don't take anybody from the chair to place me. If there is a space in the orchestra that I can be served, that I can serve you, uh, that I can be a good asset to the sound, to the orchest orchestra, please, I'm available. Mm. And But I said, please, don't take anyone and place me there for him. Yeah, yeah. Don't, I don't want. I don't want that. That's not my intentions. So I've been called the last, uh, almost all the major movies. You know. What are some of the movies you've done? Just well, so this year, yeah, they're not out yet. Uh, <laughs> actually, some of them are out. Um, and the name is in this one. It's called the the name in the the credits. Uh -huh. It's called uh, Secret Life of Pets. Oh yeah, yeah, two. It's, it's two, yeah. yeah. But I did one too, the first one. Oh, okay. La last two years ago. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it's coming now, uh, Lion's King. Lion's which is, yeah. yeah. Which it's, comes out this, uh, this next week. Tycoon yeah. is the name of the, yeah. Uh, with Hans Zimmer. The Secret Life of Pets with uh, uh, Alexander Desplat mm -hmm. that won a, a, a Oscar two years ago. Wow. And you can't see me, everybody knows. Yes. And then, uh, oh, just, yesterday was Sunday, right? Yeah, yesterday with my wife, we went to see the movie that I play, uh, uh, Spider-Man. Ah, Spider okay. Yeah. Spider-Man. Great man. movie. We just saw it. The Last Man, yeah. the last uh, one. I also play on that one. I play, uh, I don't think it's, it's out right now, uh, Frozen 2. Frozen. No, I think it's coming out later this, right. later this year. Yeah, I think, I think yeah, so, yeah. Uh, this this is the movie this year. So. Yeah, um, also play on. Um, uh, let me see, uh, sing. Oh, sing! sing yes, two. with the animals. And, yeah. yeah, sing yeah. too. <laughs> uh, also play on the uh, and uh, the the other one that I play is excuse me. Oh, Ford versus Ferrari. Really? Yeah, it's a car race, about car racing, and it's with uh, Matt Damon and uh, all those people. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's made by a, a, not only a composer, but a director of uh, Italy. Okay. Yeah, Italian movie, but it's an American actors. Okay. Uh, so I play in about seven, eight movies already this, this year. This year, wow. Yeah. Man. When you go to these studios to record, what's that like? Do you just, you go in there, you have to read a chart, do you have to set up your stuff? What's the process like? All that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the excitement is, do you excite it because you know you're going to be challenged depending, you know, if you play with all those guys yeah. that are special plus the John Williams, right? Yeah. Oops. So, but this is why I get up at 6.30 in the morning and 7, you know. To practice. To practice. Yeah. And my reading had to be, even when I don't work, you know, I had to be on top of it, you yeah. know, and my, you know. The hands and the mind, everything, the physical. So you prepare yourself. You don't take anything for, I don't take anything for granted. Yeah. You know, I don't live of the, what it happened before, how famous was weather report and everybody. <laughs> I don't, that's done. That, that's yeah. when, that fast. Koinonia and Tolu, the unknowns, you know, all that is done. You know, Chick Corea, all the albums that I done, it's great. It's now. Now, the time my life is now, now the, what I'm doing. So I respect when there are 80 to 90 musicians ready to go. You know, the downbeat is a 10 exactly. Now one second before, now one second later. Yeah. 10, pop up. Oh my God. So you have to say read all that stuff. But I... The ladies are in my car leaving to Sony Studios or to Fox Studios or to Warner Brothers Studio mm -hmm. to begin playing at 10. I'm in my car by 8, in my car. Already with my coffee done, my wife, a little breakfast, ready to go. 
I get there maybe 40 minutes later or 45 minutes later or an hour later. By nine o'clock, I'm in the studio. So I have an hour to prepare, tune the instruments, go look at the list. We are six, sometimes eight percussionists, sometimes five. Yeah, we play, you play this, Alice, in this cue. Okay, 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 great. I'm going to play the cowbell. Great for Play the cajon. Play the bombo leguero. Yeah, you know, jembe, uh, bongos over there in the room. Yeah, timbales. Okay, great. Uh huh. Right, maybe you came over here to play the bass drum. And uh, in this one, in the snare, maybe here, and the toms, and maybe some cymbals. There's a couple notes maybe that you can do on the chimes. And um, yeah, okay, great. I'm, I'm ready. I have everything. Written down, go yeah. to my part, mark with a with a marker, you know, uh, this is the instrument I'm going to play. So I had to tune them, be ready, take them out, tune them up if they need to tune up. And um, ready to go. That might take uh, 20, 30 minutes. So I have a still another 30 minutes. Go, I have a, a juice or something, talk to the musician, say hi to everybody. The musician, everybody's there. If you arrive there at 9.30, you're late. Wow. Yeah, you're, you're very late. <laughs> you are very late. Some musicians, they come because we record sometimes four or five days straight. Okay. Some musicians that live in Orange County, they rent a room close to the studio. Yeah, yeah. Because coming from Orange County oh. in the morning is two hours, oh, hour yeah. and a half, that's, hour, that's 45 almost, minutes. Yep, yep. Right, like you guys. <laughs> exactly. So it's very serious. That, you know, uh, Learned, and this is good because everything that we're talking, it has a meaning, you know. Being punctual defines your integrity. Mm, that's good. Really? Yeah. Period. Yeah. That's how serious you are, the respect for your, your peers, mm. for your workers. That's good. You know, definitely. You know, so they, everybody's there, yeah. One day I arrived at 9.15, I thought I was early. Oh, yeah, I'm early. Everybody, everybody's testing their instrument, tuning. Everybody's ready to go. I mean, like, excited for the first downbeat. You know what I mean? That's how serious it is. Now, why is it so serious? There is an incredible revenue that backs that up. Mm. I know a, lots of people don't like to say that. Probably I don't need to say it. But you know what? Right now, is the best profession there is. And I'm going to just, as an example of professionalism that is backed up with, back you up financially, economical, and everything else. And your status, your economical status is really in a very, in a better level doing working in the orchestras, in the movie, because you have revenues, you have royalties. Yeah. The more movie that you play, the bigger royalties that you're going to be getting in your life first. And uh, then you have insurance, health insurance. Yeah. And they, actually, the, mock, the money making in, 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 in for us, you know, for me that raised five children, I needed a good um, financial uh, income. You know, income yeah. to be able to send my kids to college right. and private college, private schools and everything. And uh, so I took very serious the education, the work, the jobs, the punctuality, the effectiveness of being a, a real professional in every ways. And, and God is the one that gives you that. I pray. Sometimes I do um, carpool with some of the guys and and uh, we pray we Christians we share we enjoy we talk about the Lord we you know everything and 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 like I said before sometimes you share the Lord maybe with words but it's not necessary they can see mm. how efficient your life is you know because he radiates his presence his countenance his love his strength his power his love especially, you know, his joy, yeah. you know what I mean? So all those elements uh, are an incredible natural, not requirements, natural ability that he has placed in a person that really loves him to be able to be able to sustain his professionalism and his life 
in front of in front of everybody. Yeah, I think uh, a scripture I'm reminded of um, is, you know, the Lord tells us uh, to be faithful in the small things because <laughs> once we're faithful in those small things, He's He's able to give us bigger and better things because we were able, we were good stewards of the small works. There you go. You know. I think that's 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 a clear example of what you've done throughout your career, you know. So it's incredible, yeah. To yeah. See, but you take that very seriously, you know. Yes. And, and it seems like your peers do also. Oh, everybody, because they know that uh, is the best profession right now yeah. for anybody to be in it, you know. And uh, I attribute all of that to the Lord mm -hmm. that He put me there in the right time of my life. Therefore, I like to take care. of my life mentally and physically yeah. as well, you know, and, uh, and, and I take care of myself by still uh, providing to my mind uh, coordinations and, and uh, memory and ability and peripheral hearing and peripheral vision. Mm. You know, I mean, metaphorically speaking, right, you know, right. all those things are required, especially when you start reaching age later than 60, you know, you require, it's required. A lot of, lots of people, by the time they 70, they retire, you know, and uh, lots of them, or they, they just maybe give up. I don't know. Right. I'm, not, I'm not probably not saying the right thing because it's not everybody, but, uh, God opened an incredible uh, paramount of opportunities in my life that um, I embrace all of them, you know, main, mainly because I want to continue to give the glory to him in everything that I do, in every, everywhere I go. And uh, I'm not a religious man. I'm a spiritual man led by the Holy Spirit of God, mm -hmm. you know, because I only went to, to school to fifth grade. I educate myself. Um, I read books. I still read. But when I discovered the Bible, that's the only book that I read. Yeah. Because every time I read the Bible, the scriptures that I read before, they are different every day. His mercies are new every day, you know. Sing songs to the Lord, a new song to the Lord every day. Mm. Praises to the Lord every day. You know, the Psalms, first Psalm 1 to 3 says, Blessed is the man that meditates in the Word of God. And it's his delicacy. He doesn't sit with scornful, but his life is like a tree planted near to a river of living waters. His leaves won't wither. He will bear this tree, this man, this human, many fruits, and everything he will do, it will be prosperous. Mm. Psalms 1 to 3. The Lord gave me that word, and that's what I live by. That's why I've been mentioning so many times, what do I read? What do I talk about? The only thing that I really know is my faith, is the experience that I have with the Lord on my face. I'm going to make a very full, uh, in parentheses, um, the big, big things in life to anybody, but in parentheses, I just going to, I saw him four times, his miracles. One of my sons, Javier, the one that you yeah, know. Javier. <clears throat> when he was two years old, was supposed to have a heart surgery. And they discovered that he was too young in Houston, Texas. I was playing with Weather Report. And uh, they discovered that he was born with one kidney. He's now 45. He's wow. coming next week. And he's alive. He practiced all the, the music and, the, and, and all the sports and everything. So that was my first encounter, encounter to pray, of praying. That was 44 ah, years ago when I really prayed. I haven't told you 
when I really met God, that Jesus. Because yeah. you said it was at seven years old, you you came to know the Lord, but then again, it was at seven years old. I established a relationship with God mm -hmm. because I saw my mom. I saw that her prayer were answered, mm. and when he showed me that. I was able to play music at so early age, and none of my friends play, but we play soccer really good. I said, "Well, you gave me something else." Yeah. So I said, "You gave me something else." So that's when I established my relationship with God. But salvation, okay. Let's rephrase this. When I came to the United States, I was 18. I landed in, land in New York. So Jim Krupa, so Woody Herman, Herman, right there on uh, Times Square, you know, uh, the, uh, a jazz club called the Metropole. But you can see the musician from the street because I was a minor. They didn't let me in. Mm. You know, I was wow. When I was in New York, you know, I went to see the Empire State and about 40 minutes looking at the Empire State. I never saw anything like that in my life. And things like that. Everything was everything was very impressive. It was in another country, another uh, culture, culture, another language, another race. Everything you know in those days. Not too many Latinos, mm. you know. In, you know, not too many speaking uh, Spanish people. I came to United States only saying yes and no. That's the only word that I knew in English. Anyhow, but then you get to see everything. Uh, come to Los Angeles, rehearse, and go to Las Vegas for two weeks. And, you know, inside of this uh, American music industry, you know, I was a minor. We playing the show in Las Vegas. They uh, sent a security man to get me from my room, to bring me to the stage, play my hour, wait for me, took me back to my room. I could not be in the casinos, you know. Still, it's like that, but in those days, was more whatever, uh, you know, to the point. Yeah. And uh, I saw everything that the the, the the music industry attracts, you know, um, parties and drugs, liquor, fame, money. Uh, write-ups, magazines, your name, mm. instruments, drums, percussion that you never had, you never dreamed to have before. Now they all are, are you display you, they are in your hands right there. Symbols, the best, drums, the best, and musicians, the best, uh, money, the best, uh, all those facilities. You know, so the life becomes very like, ooh, go to a different place. So I departure from God because mm. I was young. And the Lord mercy allowed me 15 years of that life to do whatever I wanted. But deep in my heart, I had him because I went repent, confess, and. Uh, not knowing the Bible yet, just remembering my faith when I was a little kid until before I came to the United States. So, okay, now we can jump to when I was called to play with the report. You know, I was living in Las Vegas playing in the, at the Hilton Hotel. That's when I got the opportunity to play with Diana Rose and, and to play with uh, The Temptations mm -hmm. and to play with um, I Cantina Turner and to play with... Um, Uh, Elvis. <laughs> yeah, Presley. You did something with Frank Sinatra as well, right? Yeah, yeah. I know all of that. And uh, wow, you know, Las Vegas, that's what I mean. The music industry, you yeah. know, they push, push, they push you in a different place. Yeah. You know, you always well dressed. You always have money in your pocket. And you always have great food, in, you know, to be fed by, you know, and you go to sleep whenever you want. Yeah. That too. And, you know, whatever. So, all these distractions, you know, I think, of course, 
This is my take now. God allowed that for me to have a, a, a testimony, a change, something even more powerful than that. He needed me to understand those things maybe uh, because he created me, he knows my nature, you know, so whatever. When I moved to Los Angeles in 1978, I saw the signs already being called. I was watching PTL uh, in those days, program late at night, midnight. Uh, my mother talked to me, visited me in Las Vegas and talked to me about the Lord. My daughter went to a, a we put in my daughter, without knowing my oldest daughter, we put my daughter in the Christian school where I was living in Silmar. And uh, one day she comes to me. This By this time, I still didn't know Jesus, our Lord Jesus. She said, Dad, who is God? They say three. The Son, God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I said, I answer you later. I didn't know the answer. I went to the bathroom to cry. That I could not answer my daughter. Looking for all the house, for a Bible. I found one. Open the Bible in Genesis. I still wasn't able to answer my daughter when I started reading Genesis because I didn't know the Bible. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said, I answer you later. Uh, come have your lunch now, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, Dad. I know that was a call. That was a call from God, you know, attracting me, calling me, saying, because we are chosen. I mean, everybody's chosen. The whole human race are chosen by God. Now, it's our yeah. understanding, wish to really receive, to follow Him, and to continue with Him. Yeah. It's our choice. It's a choice. Since I, uh, I was a kid that I had that relationship, you know, one day... Uh, after playing with Weather Report, when I quit Weather Report, I stayed in town, 1978. I sit down, three o'clock in the morning, listening to music. I actually listen to Heavy Weather, <laughs> and I finish Heavy Weather. I actually didn't like Heavy Weather, the CD, when I play it. Really? No, I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like what I play. I like the music. Yeah. I didn't like what, my, what I play. Because I said, I can't do it better, but it's, it's okay. But I like the music. And, uh, and all of a sudden, by three o'clock in the morning, I hear a voice, you know, he's calling, Alex, you haven't talked to me f- for a long time when you were a kid. You used to talk to me all the time. You haven't. And I know that you need me now. You like me to be changed. Of course, he's got, he knew me. Said yes, Lord. Changed my life. I open my arms, I weep, and I receive him. And brought me back to where I used to be as a child. Mm. And I became a born again in my house at three o'clock in the morning. Then I met Abraham Laboriel, senior. Mm. He wasn't a Christian yet, he was a Catholic, but his wife was a Christian. And his wife told him about Church on the Way. And he told me, Alex, Church on the Way. Okay, great. So I went to Church on the Way on a Sunday with him. And the Sunday that Pastor Jack was preaching, I stood up when he did the altar call. I said, I want to receive Jesus. And all of that is written in the Bible. It says, you, uh, you know, um, you talk about me, you accept me and you share about me in the great congregations. You acknowledge me in the great assemblies. Mm. You know, that's what we need to do. Yeah. We need to let people know that, yes, we're receiving Jesus. We, we are acquiring salvation. So I did that in front of the church. I received the Lord. And that day, Chester Thompson, the drummer that used to play with Genesis and Phil Calling, was there with his wife, checking Christianity, and Abraham told me, um, uh, I haven't received the Lord yet. Uh, 
So I received the Lord before Abraham and before uh, Chester, I mean, Jesus, you know. And my life changed. Mm. And, uh, and then I met my wife. I had three kids, my wife for four years now, Diana, for 40 years. And uh, God sent a wonderful person to my life. It's an angel. It's, it's a woman of, of, of God that uh, really taught me, translate the teachings for me. Because in those days, there were not what they call it Hispanic churches 41 years ago. Now, there are Spanish churches in every corner yeah. here in Los Angeles. And uh, so I received the Lord in English. <laughs> and all the teaching, Pastor Jack is in English. And I met my wife there, and we have two more children. And uh, and it was incredible. My life has been a developing. That's when you asked me before, you know, tell me about what this, uh, the, the, your life, what, what are the impacts, uh, how was the first, how was the, that first experience, the big experience, is being a, a step, it's a ladder yeah. going up, going up, going up, changing for the better and better and better, you know. I went through deliverance of my past life. Uh, I was in the ministry for seven and a half years. And we went to South America and we went to Mexico because I, that's my language to share and to pray and to build churches for seven and a half years. My wife and I, my wife speaks Spanish. And um, and with my kids, I took them and all my children are safe. My whole family in Peru are safe after they notice that uh, my life has changed. And, uh, and I told him about Jesus. I used to bring to Peru suitcases of... Uh, presents for my, remember, I have a brothers and, and parents and nieces and nephews. Bring suitcases, you know, cassettes, these, you know, records, uh, you know, politos, we'll say, polos, you know, <laughs> uh, T-shirts. And, and one day they came, they, they used to come to pick me up at the airport just to see the suitcases. Yeah, you know? yeah. And they, they came to, and they didn't see any suitcases. And they asked me, where are your suitcases? I only have my, how do you call that? Uh, the, the small one that you drag? Oh, uh, the carry-on. The carry-on. Yeah. And the carry-on, I had nine Bibles. Wow. I said, no, I'm bringing something bigger than any yeah. suitcase. And uh, that's when I told him about Jesus. And uh, so, yes, I witnessed to my... Uh, Family, my father was received the Lord when he was ninety-one. Wow! Yeah, and I don't forget that I was telling you about the four things that God really showed me: His presence, His power, His strength. So Javier was the first one, mm -hmm. and then my daughter Regina. The second one, she had mechal their ventriculum a rapture in the intestines when she was five years old. Wow. The whole church was, was praying. The pastor came to anoint her at the hospital. She was healed. And then my mother, at 86 years old, she had a colon cancer. And the, the doctor in Peru, the gastroenterologist in Peru, uh, did a surgery on her, and she was able to live 10 more years. Wow. So she, she died at 96. At 86, she had a surgery, a colon surgery. And uh, that's when my father received God because he said, Alex, what I just saw now. Uh, it's hard not to believe it, yes, right? Uh, uh, I <laughs> want to read that book that you read. I want to go to that <coughs> church that you go and I want to pray. And he said, please baptize me. So I called my pastors over here. He said, yeah, you, you know, Alex, we don't baptize. It's Jesus that want to baptize. We just instrument vessels yeah. to ba baptize people in the name of Jesus. And uh, <clears throat> so that's the third one. And then the fourth one, two and a half years ago, actually in September will be three and three years. My wife, Diana, had a, a brain surgery. Uh, she had a brain aneurysm. And uh, I saw the presence of God. She was 21 days in ICU. 
uh, very lucid. Uh, when that happened, the 7th of September, the 6th of, of September, um, we went to three different hospitals. She was in three different, in 24 hours, in three different ambulances, in three different hospitals with IVs. Took three different MRIs and CT CAT scans. And I saw his presence. And my wife is a walking miracle of God. Mm. A living, walking miracle of God, my Diana Nesiosub Acuña. Mm. A wonderful angel of heaven that came to be my partner. And uh, so now, you know, when I saw those four things that God presses in my life, I said, I'm going to write a book about this. I can close the book with this last experience. And uh, so I've been writing a book wow. about his mercy, his power, his strength, his love, everything that we know, and the victory. Amen. When he went to the cross, that's what it was. He gave us victory. Yeah, that's good. He erased everything that was written against us. He made a big spectacle hanging at the cross yeah. to give us salvation, to give us life, to give us health, to give us a strength for to be able, you know, to be uh, vessels of his salvation, to be sharers of his goodness That's to good. everybody. Yeah. Beginning with our fruits. Our fruits are our family, yeah. our children and everybody else that get to know Jesus. And the other fruits of salvation are the Holy Spirit. Definitely everything is from the Holy Spirit. But also when he says, you will know them by their fruits. Mm. My whole family is safe. All my children are safe. Five, five of them. All my nine grandchildren are safe. They know Jesus. Every time we have a dinner, I pray, I pray. They want to, you know, they all want to pray at the yeah. same time. So we let them pray, you know, everybody. And it's so wonderful to have that kind of life, you know. So I don't know if you have any other question. First of all, I wanted to really thank you, Kevin, for taking the time to come here to my house and, and you know, and, and share this beautiful yeah. time that God has prepared you know, and uh, what a privilege, what an honor. Yes, most definitely. You know, well, for me, for sure, for, yeah. you know, definitely a privilege. Um, thank you. Thank no, you. of course. Thank you for opening up your home and for being willing to do something like this. I know not everybody is o always open to, to sharing their, their testimony or, you know, their, about their life. But I, I really appreciate, you know, you opening up your home to do this. Um, just to kind of uh, end this, this, uh, this segment, um, I wanted to ask you, what advice would you give to aspiring musicians, it doesn't have to be long. But what what advice would you give to those that are aspired to be, you know, uh, a great musician uh, uh, or any and accomplish anything in their life? What do you think they should be doing, or what should they do? Right, it begins really uh, if they know that that's what they have, the gift, you know, to play music. Then they have to capitalize on that because it's not just about talent. Talent is not enough. Yeah. They had to have discipline, had to have perseverance. They had to have, first of all, begin with love. Mm. And they had to really, uh, uh, the discipline makes an incredible, uh, it's an incredible task for yeah. to acquire. They have to have a routine, uh, understanding, find teachers. Now it's so easy to really learn to play any instruments. Right. You know, YouTube has an incredible information. Oh, yeah. In the time when I was growing up, there were no Alex Acuña book of videos or, <laughs> or Steve Gatt or Peter Erskine books of videos of uh, anything like that. You know, body rich videos. I mean, yeah, we only listen to them. Uh, books now that everybody is teaching, is writing, is showing, displaying, sharing. But, um, if you have a vision, you like I said before, you have a dream, uh, 
you have a desire. For sure, what is in your heart, if you follow what I just said, with discipline, perseverance, and love, and very steady about pursuing that vision, that dream, that desire, it will happen. Yeah. Now, I have to add this. For sure, I will recommend any musician or any non-musician in the world, whatever you want to get, wherever you want to get, whatever you want to go, whatever you want to acquire in life, with God, let's put it that way. Mm. Definitely it's Jesus and the Holy Spirit, but it's Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God. It will be easier. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because I already went through all of that yeah. in my, my regular life. Yeah. So I experience, I don't talk about things that I read or, or heard. I talk about the experience that God gave me right. personally. That's my spirit, that's my life. And that, that can be your life. Uh, that can be anybody's life. Yeah. It's easier because we will produce all the things, all the gifts that we have easily, having the Lord in our life, understanding, patience, discipline, and freedom. That's good. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. I uh, really appreciate this time, you know, we got to share together. Thank you. Um, very much looking forward to what you have next, uh, the book that you're going to be uh, releasing, hopefully in the next uh, couple of uh, months or when? Oh, oh, I don't know. You don't know? I, I'm, okay. I, I'm still there. <laughs> still yeah, working on yeah, it. Yeah, working on it. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Episode number 16 with Alex Acuna. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Kevin. Welcome back. Thank you guys for checking out episode number 16 with Alex Acuna. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. All the stuff that he got to share, his testimony about his life, uh, the stuff that he's accomplished, all these different things. Uh, thank you guys for checking it out. I invite you to subscribe down below. Make sure you comment. Let me know what you guys think. As every video I say, I want to hear from you guys. I want to know what you guys think about the videos and uh, the content that I am putting out. So thank you guys for checking it out. Episode number 17 comes out next Friday. Make sure to tune in. All right, guys. Peace.